<laughs> Get ready for a horror-filled episode of Human Factors Cast. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to Human Factors Cast, your weekly podcast for all things human factors, psychology, and design. Welcome back to another episode of Human Factors Cast. I'm your host, Nick Rome. Uh, I'm joined here today by Billy Hall. Mm, hello. So I know we said Blake would be here this week, but uh, Blake will be here next week. Uh, is he Wherever be, you are, we miss you, Blake. Is he going to be the Matt Damon of our... <laughs> Matt Damon. No, 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 no. I'm, I'm sorry. My, our apologies to Matt Damon for not getting to him. Uh, you know, the Jimmy Kimmel <laughs> joke. Is, uh, is Blake going to be the uh, Matt Damon of our podcast? We'll, uh, we'll find out. Does that out. make you Jimmy Kimmel? I don't know. I mean, are you Guillermo? Oh, God. I'm the Guillermo <laughs> you, of this you walked, podcast? You walked right into that wow, one. Wow. <laughs> yeah. No, I at least thought I was the band. <laughs> <laughs> oh man all right so uh a couple of administrative things uh bring out the administrative hander um Ooh. a lot of you guys have been writing in uh that you've been listening to the show and that's wonderful i'm so uh, excited about that's that. that's great uh i wanted to bring up something that i listened to another podcast uh stuff you should know um and uh they they're on like some ridiculous number of podcasts they're up in like the the thousand or something yeah, yeah. but they they just brought up Something that I thought we should bring up towards mm. the beginning of our podcast, that if you are going through and binging all these, we want to future-proof the podcast. Um, so what we'll ask you to do, if you are going through and binging all these, and time has passed since this, we'll ask that you do like a sandwich method, where you'll listen to an older show, uh-huh. and then you'll listen to our most recent show. Oh, I like that. Because, I like that. Yeah, those numbers help us out. Um, you can still keep in touch with us that way, and uh, you, know, you won't get lost in where we currently are but you can still go back and listen to more um you can go back and listen to all that great content that we've produced up until that point so i figure you know we'll future proof the podcast we'll you know slip it in at episode 15 so that way there's only 15 hours worth of stuff that they've listened to and then they can just go back and forth oh yeah i dig that a lot i really do yeah and also you know write us reviews tell us comments tell us how we can improve that'd be great yeah please go to itunes uh like and subscribe rate us yeah do all that fun stuff we really appreciate it um so again just want to remind you guys of our upcoming shows playstation vr is next week uh we got it here in studio and um Oh, we're offline. Oh, wow. That's crazy. And we're also streaming, but uh, apparently we are offline. So, All right. So that's something. Um, but uh, <laughs> anyway, <laughs> yeah, we're uh, streaming every Monday night or trying to anyway. And so <laughs> we're making progress. Thing. We're, we're yeah. Uh, but anyway, we've got PlayStation VR in the studio. We will be working on that later tonight. Working, um, you say. It, it is working. And, I'm so and we're, excited about that. We're trying really hard to get our impressions out there, so stay tuned for that next week. We're talking about video game design coming up, mm-hmm. usability testing, mm-hmm. psychology of Thanksgiving, uh, theme parks. So just just go ahead and send us a couple messages. Uh, we'll be sure to add them into the queue for yeah, shows. Yeah, and our questions, um, too. Send us the questions about the upcoming topics. They'll get. They'll probably get on the show. Yeah, to humanfactorscast at gmail.com. We'll address them on the show. Um, and uh, Billy... So we mentioned it in the intro. What are we talking about today? We are talking about fear. 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 Ooh. So turn off the lights and listen to this episode in the dark. Yeah, this is an episode of Human Factors Cast that you want to listen to in the dark. And it's probably good that we're streaming and not live right now because um, we're they, awfully well lit. They are in the dark. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> How For appropriate. All we know, How the appropriate. Could be sneaking up on us from oh, behind. Oh, man. No, I, I can see the feed right here, actually. Uh, so I'm I'm watching oh, behind you're us. So prepared, I know I you're got so it. So prepared, yeah. So uh, so fear, fear is fear is interesting. What what are you afraid of, Billy? Uh, being alone, like like not like you know all alone. Like no one will ever love me alone. But any long time I'm myself for long periods of time scare me. Isolation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Isolation scares me. Because you have too much time to think about human factors. Well, you know, human factors, design, and psychology. It just it all just consumes your brain and you You know, you don't know, know what to it do just kinda of runs up, yeah. No, yeah, isolation. What about you? Well, isolation I just want to make a quick note. Isolation uh-huh. can be very like 
isolating. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Especially like for one? an extrovert like me. I mean, <laughs> you know, we should do a whole episode on isolation and the psychological effects of like what goes on in a mind when you isolate a person. I don't like this. <laughs> I mean, you can be our test subject. Yeah, and, that's uh, why I don't like this. <laughs> we're not going to isolate you, but we should talk about it at some point. Cause that's okay. Cool. Um, no, for me, I am fearful of losing loved ones. Right. Um, I, and I mean, that's a lot of people's fears. But another one I have is failing. Oh, I, yeah, the feel of failure. I yeah. think that's ingrained in men a lot. Well, I mean, I've experienced it tonight. So I'm facing fears tonight because we have failed to get the podcast up on YouTube running. Milestone. <laughs> Milestones, yes, yes, yes. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so I have faced my fear tonight, folks. I think hopefully fear will uh, be overcome. Yes, we will triumph over the fear. Right. Fear, fear will be triumphed over. Nothing to by... fear but fear itself. Is, is fear fearful? Fear, fear, fearing. I, I'm I'm trying to think of like scarecrow quotes from Batman. I don't know. <laughs> so, what is fear, and what makes it different from other emotions like horror, dread, and other emotions like that? Right. So, so fear. Um, is often associated with a, with a ton of different things, like you said, right? Fear, uh, a horror, or dread, um, and uh, you know, concern, anxiety. All these things kind of surround fear. And so, right. let's just break it. So, these are just different adjectives to describe sort of different emotional responses that you experience uh, when you're presented with stimuli. Okay. So, so let's start with concern. To oh. you, what is concern? You well, are concerned about – Usually it's I, – I usually put concern about like either a event or an environmental event or mostly just loved ones. It's funny you should mention politics because this is not a political podcast, but we will mention po- uh, politics later on. Oh, okay. Okay. Nonpartisan. Nonpartisan. We, yes. We do not take sides in the political debate because that's not what the show's about. That's not what the show's about, but we will break down fear mm-hmm. when it comes to politics. Um, but mostly just worry in general, I guess, would be the best way to describe yeah, it. Yeah, and that's that's the best way to describe it. Uh, mm-hmm. Concern is worry that something unpleasant will happen. Mm. Now, anxiety. Oh, I don't know. Like, anxiety is the thing that keeps you up at night. Anxiety is the thing that races through your head, you know? It's like a little speed demon that keeps you down. It's basically a more intense worry. Uh-huh. It's it's something. It's it's worry about what could happen in the future. Mm-hmm. Um, whether it's rational or not, it's still worry. Well, it also it's happens just, from things in the past, right? You get anxiety about things you've done or things you've. Done. Well, no, it's it's worry about something that could happen. Oh, um, yeah. I mean, that definitely influences the fact that you would have anxiety uh-huh, uh-huh. around something. Um, and then you have nervousness. What? What to you is nervousness? Fidgeting, talking to girls, being on podcasts. <laughs> well, nervousness is basically <laughs> <laughs> nervousness is something uh, when you're scared of something that might happen, but there's no real danger. Okay, I see. Like, uh, like nerves can be like attributed to rejection or you know, right? Or I mean, social interactions. Yeah. So, so I guess the. The devil's in the details here, right? Anxiety is something that could happen. Nervousness is something that probably won't happen. Fear. Now, fear. Fear is like the main event right. that we're talking about today. It's the psychology of fear. Um, what what do you think fear is? Wow. Well, fear is something you're scared of. Fear is uh, not necessarily rational, you know? Uh, fear is that idea or phobia that you have of something. Yes. I mean, so, like, that's how I see it. So so fear uh-huh. is an unpleasant emotion that is what you feel when you are sure something bad is going to happen. You are absolutely sure this is going to happen. So we've, we've stepped up from anxiety and nervousness where things might happen or could happen. Mm-hmm. You, you feel like it's going to happen. Um, this is when you're extremely worried about something, right? And And... It's uh, it's not as intense as terror or right. horror right. that we're we're going to talk about in a bit, um, but uh, it's something. It's the emotion that you feel when you're scared that something is out there in the dark making noises. Yeah, like yeah. the children across the street. Those I'm terrible yeah. fra- freaking children. <laughs> I'm so afraid of them. I mean, children of the corn taught us to fear children. 
So, or or when you're reading a scary story and uh-huh. it's pulling you in just a little too much, right? Right. And we'll right. talk about scary stories later with or, creepy. Or you know, the good old fashioned scary movie. You know, you run a little, walk a little faster down the hallway to turn the lights off. See, yeah. Now, now the, uh, yeah, right. Yeah. Oh man, have you seen Lights Out? Uh, well, no, 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 no. Oh, that's the one where you turn off the lights and then there's the creature standing there. You turn them on, and they're gone. Oh, dude, that's so cool. Oh, it's. Oh, it's. I don't know. The vanishing on Seventh Street's what scared me. <laughs> Man, we'll talk about horror movies later. Okay, okay, okay. All right. right. I like that term, dread. It has so much. You're thinking judge. Uh, I'm blah. <laughs> judge dread. <laughs> I am the blah. Okay, so dread. Yeah. Um, the difference between dread and fear is that uh, this is when you're strongly afraid of an event, a thing, or a place that you've seen before. Uh-huh. Uh, so this is this is something that you've seen before, and it's stronger than apprehension or anticipation. Okay, so it's the idea that I expect that something to happen the way it's going to happen. Or like when I was a kid, I would be dreading my parents coming home after I did something bad because I knew I was going to be in trouble. You knew something very the bad. was going to come out. You Watch had, out. yeah, something very bad was going to happen. You have this anticipation of danger. Right, right, right. Yeah. Funny enough, my family members are the ones who give us the most dread over <laughs> children. Or, Wait till your father gets home. Or the, the thing that I always um, associate with dread is that phone call. Oh, yeah. You know when you get that phone call or that text that just is like, We need oh, to talk. Bad news. Like, yeah, yeah. That to me is dread because it has left the door open to a million possibilities and you're just sitting there going, Ugh, what could it be? Something bad is going to happen. So dread can transition to even anxiety. Dread could transition to anxiety um, because, yeah, it's it's an intense worry about something that could happen in the future right right um, and those two can coexist i think right um let's move on to terror okay terror terror what, what what do you think about terror well i think terror is like the strongest form you know like when you're terror it's the idea Terrified. of like ongoing fear like you know something slowly walking towards you or you know you see the bad thing coming you know what i mean like it's coming for you like a dog chasing you yes so is it it's a strong type of fear uh-huh that happens when something bad is happening, but, uh, but you can't see the cause of it or understand what is happening. Really? Yeah. So every time someone sneaks up behind you, puts their hands on their shoulder and goes, boo, they're that's that type of terror? No, that's something else that we'll get to in a minute. Okay. Terror. Ter- think about it's the emotion you feel when you're running from something chasing you in a nightmare. Yeah. Or you when know, a dog's chasing or, you down the street. Or or how about, you know, the protagonist in a horror movie is, yeah. like, running from something, but they can't see it. They don't know where it is. They're experiencing terror. So it's kind of like the idea of an unknown, but there. Yes. You don't know what or where, but you know it is. Okay, that's really deep. Yeah. That's really in there. Let's move on to horror. Okay, okay. Mm-hmm. I love horror. Horror I love movies? all of those movies. Yeah. Horror movies? Okay. All right, we'll talk about horror movies later. What's your favorite horror movie, real quick? I, I have this in the notes. Oh, um, yeah, it's a little later. We'll get uh, there. We'll get there. I, I like psychological thrillers, though. Oh, uh, yeah. go figure. You're go right, figure. right. Psycho- like guy, the guy who likes playing with people's minds. <laughs> sure, sure. Let's put it that way. So horror. Yeah. This is a strong type of fear, elicited by something frightening you have seen. Uh huh. So instead of terror, where you haven't seen it, right? You've seen this, and uh, think about like if you were to watch—I I don't know. This is—I should—I should really give like some sort of disclaimer on this podcast. Like this is this is gonna get dark, guys. Dark. This is gonna get dark. I should probably put a parental advisory on this one. <laughs> like if you're listening to it with your uh, with your children about human factor psychology and design, this could be this could be a little intense. Like, it's not crude, it's not blue, but it's going to be a little scary. It, it could be scary. It's a scary episode. Ooh, so so I horror. Like yeah? Horror is when you have witnessed a car crash in front of you. Because you have seen something visually frightening. Uh-huh. Uh, you've seen it. And then, you know, it's just, it's it's scary. I get it's, it. So it's, it's horrifying. It doesn't necessarily happen to you, but you are experiencing it in a way. 
Right. So so think about it maybe like as the resolution to terror, right? Whereas terror, you don't know what's chasing you. You don't know what's following you. You don't know what it is. Right. Horror is actually seeing the results. So like seeing think about – go through it type of thing. Through the windshield? Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. With their body all mutilated and uh, – That is horrifying. So in that like definition, gore. the gore is the horror. It could be gore, or it could be like, it's just a strong type of fear, right? Elicited by something that you've seen. So, so if you have seen, like, let's say you are, uh, let's say you have a phobia of something. Um, Spiders is a common one. Sure. Uh, like, let's say it's completely, like, crippling. Um, actually, no, I think crippling comes later. I think that's that's somewhere else. Oh, okay. Oh, We're getting into deeper forms of no, fear no, no. here. It's, it's not crippling. I don't have that one in our notes. All right, Dr. Let's, Crane. <laughs> let's, uh, let's get into alarm, though. Okay, alarm. Yes. So this is this – is, uh, See, I didn't know all these terms had, like, broad definitions. Yeah, I didn't know either until we, like, researched this for the show. That's pretty cool. I dig that. I didn't know that. Yeah. Like this is, they maybe make choices of fear and horror in maybe. different ways. Maybe. Who knows? Um, but alarm. So this one, this one to me is – the most uh, overused, mm-hmm. um, stale. Um, oh, I know where you're going with this. Jump scares. Yeah, jump, jump scares. Sca- it's the cheapest form of horror. Ah, it's like they use it in everything. Yeah, it's like uh, it. It is literally the cheapest form of horror yeah. because it is something that it's the sudden appearance of something dangerous. Mm-hmm. It's strong and sharp. Right. Because it wasn't there before. Right. Just that. Uh. That. That those crappy video games where the woman shows up on the screen and screams at you and all of a sudden to make a jump, yeah, yeah, and I mean, you know, it, they use the sense of terror to get you to this state of alarm, right? Mm-hmm. They, you know, something's out there. You don't know when it's coming, but you know it is coming. Um, it's, a, it's there. Mm-hmm. <sighs> I hate jump scares. It's just so cheap. They're not it's so cheap. They, this is why they are the lowest common denominator. I mean, I mean, this is why I prefer strongly um, psychological thrillers. Right. I mean, they're like the hammer or scare toolbox. Yeah, really, they are. Um, so, so let's see. Panic. Okay. Love their music at the disco. I knew it. I knew you were gonna go there. <laughs> I wish it's I had not even in the. <laughs> I wish I had a <laughs> sound clip of. Okay. <laughs> uh, so panic. At the disco. At the disco, extremely intense fear. Now, this is this was my favorite one, panic. Okay, because panic is extremely intense fear. Uh-huh. It causes someone to become unreasonable. Okay, or to lose control of their mental faculties. Okay, you have lost your damn mind. This is that moment you always see in those old timey movies where the woman's freaking out and the guy just. And she her. runs up the stairs when a guy with a chainsaw is uh, kissing. Okay, okay. So after I read this, though, like I have gained so much more sympathy for the people in these horror movies that you're all like, why are you doing that? That's stupid. I would never have done that. I would have tripped over all those exposed roots. If you were experiencing panic and you lost control of your mental faculties, you might have. Oh, see, because... they never talk about that. No. I thought that was cool. I, I did. I cool. really do think that's cool. Okay, so – Keeping with these different types of emotions in mind, how do these affect you while you're experiencing things? Like, we talked about how it's compounded. Like, you know, movies, for example. You know, different tools and stuff like that. Right, right. So so let's talk about different mediums, right? So you have, like, movies, video games. Um, you have the... Uh, sometimes books. Sometimes books. Uh, I mean, a lot of times books, A lot of times really. books. But, yeah, I mean, like, Stephen even King. music. Yeah, music. Um, you know those those theme park attractions where you can go and get scared. Podcasts. Podcasts that scare you. Yeah. Talk about mutilated bodies flying through shields. <laughs> or shadow people. I, I hope we don't lose listeners over this. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think we're gonna lose I don't listeners think so. over uh, using the adjective mutilated. Mutilated. That's a scientific term. For, yeah. All right. Uh, so so let's talk about like the difference between the genres, right? And okay. how they kind of establish this um, sort of the differences right so so we talked about how like you know when a monster's chasing you that's establishing fear and terror because you don't know what's chasing you mm-hmm. um so i think fear 
is universally experienced in all these mediums, right? Mm -hmm. Uh, Throughout the genres, it's implied because they're horror movies. Right. You're going to be scared. Right. That's the goal. That's the goal anyway. Sometimes you just laugh at it a lot. Right. Something bad is going to happen at some point. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. Um, And you're expecting it throughout. So, um, but like, uh, so take paranormal movies for paranormal all right. activity. Yeah, and, yeah. You know, all the the first paranormal activity and stuff like that. Yeah, I guess. Well, those. and the seven following. Uh, God, those things went these, on forever. These okay, so these would be most stereotypical of jump scares, right? Yeah, yeah. So, I so, mean, there is some build up. Horror there's some build up. There's like some that. terror because you don't know what's going on. But at the end of it, it really just turns into a series of syncopated jump scare types. Right. I mean, yeah. Yeah, and slasher movies too, maybe. I mean, I would think more of the idea of a jump scare would be a slasher movie. Yeah, because you know they mean? just pop out of nowhere. They're like, "Oh, they're here!" Or, or they do that build up, and then nothing happens. And then, yeah, and then nothing happens. Oh man, that's such a tease. Yeah, it's you like, know? Oh. oh. All right, uh, this is a family show. Yeah, I knew you were gonna say it. <laughs> I wasn't gonna do it. All right, uh, so uh, let's see here. Psychological thrillers, like I said earlier, those are my favorite. Right, right. Um, Can you give some examples? Yes, and I like them because they're plausible. Okay. This is this is. I don't believe in paranormal beings, so that to, so relating to that kind of thing is hard for me, right? But but a movie like The Shining, The Shining. The Shining. Right. Okay. That's completely plausible. That somebody... Man going crazy. That you know in a chateau. and love yeah. could go crazy, get cavity, like, in isolation. I mean... In isolation. Yeah. No. Uh, <laughs> Shining always had a special place of fear right? in my heart. Right, Billy? Yeah. In a big place like that with nobody around... Is, no. is The Shining the reason why you're afraid of being isolated? In part, maybe? Maybe. I mean, it's right up there with, isn't it really the reason why so many people are afraid of clowns? I don't know. I mean, I, like, think about uh, it. Being we isolated and saw... clowns? I, how, how do you link those two together? No, I meant, like, you know, it is probably the reason why a lot of people are afraid uh, of clowns. Okay. Oh, I thought you were saying it isn't. Okay. No, it isn't. It, got it. it. No, I got, I got it. I got it. Okay. The clown. Pennywise. Speaking of it. Yeah. Um, another one of my favorites what? is It follows isn't that the one where it's the basically you don't know if they're having a psychological breakdown but there's a demon that jumps into different people's bodies so the premise behind it is there's this uh there's this entity right that follows you around okay and it kills you okay very japanese now it's kind of it's kind of bordering the paranormal aspect of it is like it, it's completely filled with terror because you know it's following. You don't know which form it's going to take. Right. But it's out there. And, and it's, it's coming, coming for, for you. <laughs> yeah. No, it's just like uh, Japanese horror is actually very popular with that. Like The Ring, you know, all those Japanese types of movies. It's always the idea of like, no, you're kind of boned. You're just trying to. Right. Right. Yeah. I, I mean, uh, yeah, and then speaking of terror, like slasher movies are really good for that, right? Because right. you, you know they're out there. Well, I, I mean, you can it beat, becomes horror. You can beat all those guys though. Yeah, they always you could. win in the end with a happy ending. But but I mean, like it's it's good for uh, it's good for horror because right. you're witnessing horrific acts on the screen, like people's bodies being dismembered, uh-huh. lots of blood and guts, and and uh, I guess this isn't a family show, right? Like, <laughs> Well, I Blood mean, guts. like, it's a horror movie, you know? Right, I mean, right. nowadays, even kids' horror movies are kind of freaky nowadays. A little bit, yeah. All right, okay, so, 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 well, in all these movies, you're experiencing fake fear or mm-hmm. simulated fear. More like horror. You're experiencing horror because you're seeing something. Fake fear. Okay, okay. How do you mean, uh, what's the difference between real fear and fake fear, though? So, with uh, with simulated fear... Uh-huh. You're still experiencing some sort of separation between what's happening on the screen or what's happening in the book or what's happening in – and VR is a little different. We can talk about that next week. Because, oh, God. You're so excited about oh, this. Oh, I'm so excited about he that. He is so jazzed about this, people. Um, yeah. Well, we're going to talk about the PlayStation VR next week because we played a game called uh, what, Until uh, Dawn, Rush of Blood. Yeah, Rush of Blood, which and, uh, is a terrible title. Oh, man. It's a terrible I, uh, title. I it takes a lot to really get me to scare and really uh, it got you. It got me. 
I was like, I was shaking. Let's talk about it next okay. week. Okay. Um, so so you know, in all these cases, except for maybe VR, you're looking through a window. Uh huh. You know, books are a little different because you're it's in your mind. But in the mo in in most cases, when you're watching a, a scary movie, you're looking through a window, and you can separate yourself from this. And so, the more degrees of separation that you have from what's happening, uh -huh. the more you can say, "Okay, I'm safe. I can fear for the characters." I can experience these emotions, but it's environment. It's almost like empathy more than almost fear, right? Because right, you're empathetic yeah. to what the characters are going through. So, I mean, you know, the higher fidelity that you can get with the senses, uh -huh. the more re right? So if you I have, see, the immersion. Right. If okay. you have surround sound and things that take up your entire peripheral vision. Uh, next week. Next, next week. week. Next yeah, week. yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, there's, there's uh, less degrees of separation when that happens right. between you and what's happening. Um, so real fear... Is when you find out, you know, that your credit score has dropped. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> or uh, adult hashtag adult problems. Right or uh, or you know somebody that you that you know and love got into a car crash. Yeah, that, that's real fear. No, that, that that's I, like I, dread. I, we've all had that happen when people get into horrible car accidents, and we're just like, oh my gosh, no, 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 no. Please be okay. I mean, these have real world consequences. That's what the difference is, really. Um, you know, you can't die from watching a movie, um, but if you're in a virtual reality, you know, you might be able to die. Right. Like, you know, and it, it just, for me, it just feels different, too. I mean, like, you can you can feel real fear um, in a psychophysiological way. That just means, like. What do you mean by psychophysiological? In your brain, in your limbic system, just everything. Like. You can feel, your body starts simulating all the things of fear, your pumping body, that adrenaline. Your body does something differently. Your body does something differently when fear is real than when it's fake. Okay. That's that's all I'm saying. Hmm. I mean, it, it might come close sometimes um, when you see something screen, but just nothing beats real fear. You know, one of the things that actually gave me a lot of trepidation was actually No Man's Skies. Why is that? Because think about the game. Like sometimes Isolation. I actually got a little right, freaked out a little bit. Do we have the notes? Well, you got to write that down. All right. I'll, I'll write it down later. We... I show on isolation. I really don't. All right. Next week. Isolation. <laughs> oh, you monster. I know. Yeah, okay. So what's the different? Uh, no. So read them. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> we have show notes. We're, we're not we afraid have, of this. We have show notes. We do this because we have to keep we keep a lot of facts straight. Well, and and we produce these for you guys. I mean, we go we put you know putting these together. So I that mean, way most we... of the most of it's just an outline. It's not like we're having all right, like, all right. But okay, What's um, next? so one of the big things that come across on the internet that we spend a lot of time in, of course, we've all probably heard about it, but it's creepy pasta. What is creepy pasta? You know, like. Creepypasta is a website where you can go, and a lot of people do user-submitted uh, videos, pictures, stories, things like that, yeah, right? they're short stories. They're, yeah. I mean, the origin came from... Um, people have done pictures and stuff like that, too. Well, yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, you know, Creepypasta originated really from, um, you know, say Bloody Mary in the mirror three times. Right. And with the lights off and see what happens. Right, or the Ouija board type of thing. Right. I mean, like, it's, it's kind of like... Uh, like Slenderman. That's like the most well-known creepypasta out there. That's one of the – yeah. I would think that one and the, 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 the fake photos of the Russian experimentation of people. Oh, with, yes. That one, I, those? I was thinking so today. Nope. But, uh, nope. 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 We're not nope, watching nope, that one. Nope. I, nope that one out. freaked me out. No. Well, I thought about it because it was an experiment and we're scientists. Yeah, but it scientists. wasn't real. It never really happened. None well, of those things are real. Those are fake that you, photos. That you know of. That's UFOs. the whole point. That's the whole point of creepypasta is that this stuff is grounded in reality and pop culture. And so the plausibility, it's it's that's true. Plausible. Like, like that's the whole thing. It's like this could happen. And so you I mean you wouldn't get freaked out if you were, you know, you're sitting in a bedroom and something happens, right? Like you wouldn't get freaked out normally. True. This is plausible. I mean like for example Slenderman's a prime example of that. I googled what the origin of Slenderman was. Because I didn't know. I thought it was like some urban folk tale from like Half-Life 2 type of days. I right. didn't know. Well, what is the origin? Oh, it's a project someone actually made on Creepypasta and yeah. it just exploded. Yep. that's. But I thought it was actually like some sort of like old folklore tale like all the other horror stories that we have. Have you, have you heard of this uh, Pokemon Black one? 
You know, I thought that was a real game until you actually brought it up today. No, it is a uh, it's a creepy pasta. Um, if you're fans of Pokemon, go check out our what first episode Pokemon uh-huh. Go. Pokemon Go first episode. Oh man, that's a train wreck of an episode. <laughs> well, we were new. <laughs> we were <laughs> brand spanking new. <laughs> we off were the new bus. podcasters. Uh, we should redux in... that episode. Oh, I know. <laughs> Pilot in episode one point five. One point five. No, but that Pokemon. Um, That's not pasta. a real game. No, 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 no. It's about a version where you get a ghost as a starter, right? right. And uh, you know this ghost knows, mm-hmm. and every time you use Curse, uh, the only trick it knows is Curse. Uh, and every time you use it, it makes the screen goes go black. Right. And when you uh, when it comes back, you know whoever you use Cursed on is gone. Yeah. Like in trainer battles, when you battle them again, they will no longer have the Pokemon that you use Curse on. Yeah. I, You're I, killing Pokemon, right? After, like, I thought this was actually a, a user-made game that somebody made. No. No, it doesn't no, even exist? No, no, no. The whole story is that, like, I have made it after this. Creepy people found this game in, like, <laughs> you know, at a used GameStop, like, 12 years ago. Used GameStop. Or, like, a, a, it's used in a GameStop 12 years ago. Yeah, yeah. You know, like, like that's the origin of it. And it's just, like... I can't do it justice. Go, go read it. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. I, I kind of uh, want to go to a GameStop with a bunch of those labels and slap them on the side of like Pokemon game, <laughs> Pokemon Black. Okay, so so I have picked a couple of samples of Creepy Pasta for the show. Um, Billy, I'm gonna have you decide which one you're gonna pick your poison here. Which one do you want? Do you want well, Lazy I- Saturday Night? I mean, like, uh, I did like Lazy Saturday Night. Oh, you read these. Okay. I mean, of course I did. Okay. I w- read our wow, show Wow, you're, you're prepared, man. All right. And the window one was my favorite. The though. window one. Is, okay, so we have time for two. Okay, let's do two. May- maybe three. Mm-hmm. We'll, we'll see We'll see where we're at after. Uh, so which one? Lazy Saturday Night or Seaweed? Let's do the window. Oh. We'll save, we'll oh, save okay, the window okay, for okay. last. Let's do Lazy Saturday Night. All right, all right. <clears throat> so this is a creepypasta that we found uh, on creepypasta.com. Uh, you can go there for all of your scary uh, sit alone in the dark needs. Uh, this one's called Lazy Saturday Night. <clears throat> okay. Did we get the username real quick? Um, we did not, and I think a lot of them are anonymous. Okay. Um, but uh, whoever did write this, thank you for submitting. Thank you. Thank you, yes. <clears throat> so this one's called Lazy Saturday Night. Uh-huh. Here I lay, all snuggled up in bed, warm and satisfied, under the soft silk covers, watching some stupid documentary on TV I've never heard of. I changed the channel, but the gallon tub of cookie dough ice cream wouldn't let me hands for anything other than shoveling the frozen treat into my mouth. Nights like these are rare. It isn't often that everyone's out of the house but me, so I make sure I savor them. In fact, I, was ex- I wasn't expecting anyone to come back until the morning. That's what made the sound of the door opening downstairs like- we talked about alarm. Yep. Panic. We talked about panic, too. Uh-huh. Panic hits me like a steam train. I silently leap out from under spilling ice cream all over my white carpet on the floor and creak open the wardrobe next to the bed. I hear footsteps, heavy and indiscreet, like they want me to know they're here. I pant and pick up the spoon I had just been using to enjoy my ice cream with. The footsteps get louder. I force myself into the small space remaining in the wardrobe and close the door. Just as the stranger opens the bedroom door, not sparing any seconds for silence, I peer through the gap. His face looks familiar, but I can't quite place my finger on where I know him from. He spots the spilled ice cream and darts his head across the wide expanse of the bedroom. He calls, not sounding vicious, I made that mistake before. Never under any circumstances a sooniness from a voice. He looks under the bed. Ah, oh, crap. He's looking for someone. I hold back a whimper and start bending the bowl of the spoon back and forth, hoping to snap it off and create some way of defending myself. It snaps, but it creates a metallic click. The man turns his head around and makes his way to the wardrobe. I'm sh- Please don't open it. Please don't open it. Please don't open it. The door swings open and he sees me. We scream simultaneously in fear and surprise. Without hesitation, I leap onto the man and start digging for a stretch of flesh I can t- with the sharp edge of the spoon handle. He screeches in clear pain, but I won't stop. I hammer the handle deeper into his chest and neck and over and over till he becomes motionless. I've killed him. I cry in disgust and sprint downstairs away from the house. 
I charge down the road until I feel like I'm far enough away. I sit down for a moment and exhale very heavily before regaining my composure. <sighs> Pulling out my phone, I open Twitter and tag party. Hopefully this time I'll find a household that isn't lying when they say they'll be out all night. <laughs> I love that <laughs> no, I thought I think I thought this one was interesting, right? Because the whole time you are right. who we thought was getting their home invaded, right? What's a twist? What a twist! And that's 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 a that's a trademark of creepy pasta as well. It's like yeah. there's this twist at the end. You're like, oh, oh, this who was the monster all along? Right, exactly. And I mean, like, it's totally not completely unreasonable to think that you'd just be hanging out on a Saturday night in somebody else's house and then search party. And perception. Not... It's all about that perception. <laughs> it's you one know. of the reasons why um, my favorite old haunts, monster movie, my favorite old timey monster movie was always Creature from the Black Lagoon. Yeah. You know why? Because I don't know if the creature was really the monster in that whole movie. Mm. Because the first time you see the monster, he's like reaching through like, hey guys, what's going on? Bam. He takes a lantern full of oil. <laughs> And he's like, whoa, whoa, whoa. And what the whole time, people are trying to torture him, chase him down, and run him ragged. And then they get upset when he steals one of them after they captured him. I'm just saying. Okay. So I have two more, but I think I'm just going to read one more. All right. Uh, which just one? Because, just because time. Uh, we talked about the window. Right, right, right. Let's talk about the window. Okay. <clears throat> so the window. And this one starts in the bedroom, too. Mm, I like it in okay. the bedroom. This is a family show. Yep. Okay. Mm. Excuse me. All right. I have to get my uh, audiobook voice going. This my is audiobook yeah, voice. Yeah. All right. <clears throat> I was in my bedroom doing the typical at home teenager thing staying up late, digging around the depths of the internet, and generally not paying attention to anything other than what was on my monitor. It was the early morning around 2 o'clock, and everyone in my house was asleep but me. The room was nice and warm, despite it being the dead of winter, since we had the windows replaced last week. We'd been losing heat, especially in the bedroom, uh, though some old storm windows, but the, uh, through some old storm windows, but the bitter cold was now kept outside. I don't remember what I was doing. Terror that consumed me. Why are you using all these adjectives that we talked about? Right. I think in the terror that consumed me, I must have forgotten. I heard a noise at my window. Not the sound of a bug flying into it or the shrubs banging against it, no. This was an odd noise, a thumping sound, something I'd never heard before. Anything of it initially, uh, whether that be because I was genuinely believed it was nothing or because I didn't want to find out what it was, I can't say. But I sat there for a moment and just listened to it. It was distinctly rhythmic. <laughs> thump. 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 It only lasted 15 seconds or so and then stopped. I shuddered but shrugged it off, and after spending another hour or two browsing and consciously not looking towards the window, turned my computer off and fell into an uneasy but uneventful sleep. This morning, after the sun had been up for a few hours and things that go bump in the night were doing whatever they do during the daylight hours, I walked to my window and spent a few minutes trying to replicate the sound I had heard. I tapped the window, bumped it with some soft objects, even locked and unlocked it, but I... Couldn't for the life of me figure out what had made the sound. Nothing I did was even close. I figured that the event had been a fluke and that the day was normal until this evening. My dad arrived home from work at his usual time and decided that the house was too stuffy. So he came into my room and went to open the window. We're in Texas, so the window, or so sorry, so the winter is sometimes very comfortable, uh -huh. as was the case today. Never in my life before that moment have I genuinely wished to be deaf. My dad forgot to open it, and when he pulled up, it produced the same noise I heard tonight. <laughs> my window only has handles on the inside. <laughs> now, Love that. Story. Now, now, okay, so I, I put this one in here because I was confused about the ending. What's up? Now, does that mean that someone was trying to get in from the outside? Or that someone was trying to get out from the inside. Uh, someone was trying to get out from yeah. the inside. Yeah, yeah. that's because what you the handles, from the handles are handles? in the inside. Right. See, so you did you you lived in Idaho, right? Uh, unfortunately. Yeah, like windows that sometimes get ice or frigid over come with handles at the end of them because those little lips that usually we have here won't give you enough leverage to pull up. Ah. Uh. 
So the idea of it is is that you keep those handles on the inside and they bump. So bump, someone bump, was in his room trying to get out. Trying to get out. Yeah. And that's why he wasn't con- trying not to look at the window. Uh-huh. See, that's the scary part. Something was in the room with them. Mm. Well, see, that's what got me. That's what I, see, that's what I thought, like, initially. I mean, it could be a ghost, but it's that unknown that makes you scared. Right. Was it, was it his dad? Was it something Was it something else? else? Was, was it a ghost? Somebody was it... hiding under the bed and just trying to get out of the room? Or in the window. Oh, and man. then you also got to think about the type of voice it was there. You know, staying up late, digging around the desk, and then not paying attention to anything that was on my monitor. They kept it general. This could be a guy or a girl. Yeah, it's true. And the idea of it is that if it's a girl... It applies to anyone. It, and it, this is even more terrifying if you're, if you're a female. A female, yeah, yeah, you know? I mean, male, female, both of these things can be scary horror. You know, that's one of the things we didn't talk about. It it's does, applies to anyone. Does Yeah, but does fear... Do you think fear is different roles? I think different things scare different people. Mm-hmm. I think a dark parking lot at night uh, scares females an awful lot more than it scares males. For not any reason that is their fault. Yeah, it's ingrained in us indifferently. You know what I mean? It's ingrained in us differently. Well, yeah, and you I know? mean, males are completely to blame for that. Let me just be clear. <laughs> like, You're right. Absolutely. Freaking awful. That, anyway. So, but let's break it down, though. This wouldn't be a human factors cast without bringing it back to some human factor principles. So, how can we use fear in design and it doesn't thing but how can we do it no 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 no. so this yeah i mean this show is about human factor psychology and design i mean it's good to talk about everything right 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 so so we've been talking about the psychology of this today um but yeah it is kind of nice to revisit how how you can use this in design uh, right we always try to bring know, it back bring it back uh, now again like you just said this kind of stuff can be seen as evil uh-huh. or you know dishonest um so we're not necessarily condoning it Spirit of Halloween, the dark time of the year. Um, right. How is it used? Right. We'll, we'll provide a few suggestions. Think about this uh, more or less uh, like defense against the dark arts. Ooh, you we're have getting to, all Harry Potter here. You have to know the dark arts to be uh, to defend against them, right? Right, right, right. right. Okay. I mean, like, we've got to elicit responses. Defense against the dark design. Right. Ooh, I like that. Defense all right. against the t-shirt. So, so first off, what you can do is um, research what your users are going to be afraid of. Uh-huh. Right? That seems pretty easy. Who, what your audience will probably be scared of. Right. So, like, think about this. For a financial app, uh-huh. are you afraid of losing money? Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Target it. Yeah. Right? Oh, yeah. Your we, identity. We can protect your money. Uh-huh. F- prey off of their fears. Right. How about how about uh, loss of data for a, a cloud storage app? Cloud are you app, yeah. are you afraid losing all those pictures and videos that you've taken of all your vacations? Yeah, all of your like favorite memories gone just because your hard drive. Yeah, well, we have hard drives that won't corrupt, so just put your stuff on our server and you'll be good and pay for our service. And right, right, right. How about um, not fear of isolation, but fear of being alone? For a dating app. See, because I mean, I never see like, are you lonely? Are you sad? Really? You've never seen an are you lonely ad on the internet? No. I Wait, mean, whoa, like whoa. most of the time are you, are that those dating. No, most of the time <laughs> those dating apps are always being like, hey, it's more you can have. Like, look, you go to a dating set, you're going to be running through a park, swinging around in slow circles, <laughs> sure. dating lights, sneaking little kisses in the movie theater. Sure, sure. But I mean, there are definitely some, some sites. Uh, you think so? I've never seen it? Like I legitimately. This is a family podcast, so I'll show you after. <laughs> um, are you alone? Are, are you alone? Oh, I have seen those one eight hundred numbers. That's what I'm talking about okay. here. Okay. Okay. So prey off these fears, right? Uh-huh. Highlight it when illustrating the benefits of your app oh. or your program or your whatever you're selling. Highlight these fears. Prey off of them. Uh, we don't condone this. This is how this is how people do it. Um, so, like, let's say you um, you another way you can do this is like if you um, induce fear uh-huh. in the sense that you know people think think people will think that something bad will happen if they don't act now. Right. You're gonna miss out on this sale. Great deal. Nineteen ninety five. And we'll throw in a second one if you act now. Act, act now. now. Do it now. 
or you're gonna miss you're gonna miss out. You're afraid you yourself later. Yeah, um, and th- there's several. Oh, excuse me. There's several methods of doing this, right? You can um, provide a timer uh-huh. to induce anxiety. Uh-huh. Um, you can frame it as a competition rather than something scary. First right? 100 people to call gets the free blender. All right. Let them decide how much they put in. Uh-huh. But the fear is still looming over them. While supplies last. I mean, isn't exactly. Black Friday like really supported by fear in oh, that standpoint? Black Friday is real. F- <laughs> oh. I, I avoid it. I avoid it like the plague. Real and fake fear, man. That is just. You know, I do have a quick story about Black Friday. Um, uh huh. When I was living in Idaho, uh, I actually went to do Black Friday because there was like college students, uh-huh. and they all went away for right. Thanksgiving. Right. And so, the local, it was real weird. I walked in, and there were like there were lines, civilized lines. Civilized line. And okay, here's okay, so there was like a fifty five inch TV in the back right. for like two hundred bucks or something. Wow. Like that. Good deal, right? Right. I was like, eh, by the time we get there it's just gonna be sold out. But I mean we go in and look anyway. Look at it. So right. I mean, yeah, so we, we walk in the back and we're like, Hey, are there any TVs left? And they're like, Yeah, here, here's a wristband. Um, you know, we can't sell these to you yet, but just hang out until six o'clock and then and then it's all yours. That's it. That was it. Wow. I didn't have to kill anybody for anything. <laughs> no, no women. I'm like, you know, that's the thing. I don't know if it's just because of where I live, but I mean, I've seen the horror videos of Black Friday, yeah. but I've never experienced Ooh. it. Lines? No. Sure. No. Southern California? No. Uh, that was enough for us. Really? <laughs> yeah, we're I, done. I went down for Black Friday the other day. I mean, last year with a friend of mine, it really wasn't that bad. Well, what time of day did you go? I, we went at midnight. Oh, well, no. Yeah. 10 o'clock on, on yeah. after Thanksgiving. Where'd you go? Best Buy. Wow. I'm I mean, surprised. there was a there was a long line, you know what I mean. But it was civilized. And I got some dirty looks when I came talking to the line, but I just waved and said, "I'm not buying anything." I mean, like I don't know. I just these horror stories, these horror horror stories, stories. of people getting or trampled. the videos that you see, yeah, yeah, and just awful human behavior. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, let's see what else. Notice they happen a lot at Walmart. I'm just saying. Yeah, this interaction. Yeah, those WalMarts bad. always have the bad things happen. I don't know why. So anyway, another more sinister way. Uh, of using fear in design is providing the user with two choices that seem plausible or two choices that are absolutely awful. Um, but create fear around one choice or, or to influence the choice of the other. I see. Okay. Okay. Remember when I said this wasn't a political podcast? Yeah. No, I get what you're saying. Okay. Though. Okay. Yeah. No. So, so like, Think about attack ads in the election. And I mean, you could say this for any election, really. Right, I yeah, mean, yeah. it's more I, relevant right I mean, now in 2016. Not uh, at all. But we're just saying that these are things that are used in elections, right? Mm-hmm. Like, illustrate what can happen if the other option is picked. Illustrate why you should fear one option over the other. Talk about the credibility of choosing one option over the other. Yeah, exactly. You know. All these things. So so attacks, those, are, those induce fear. Right. And, uh, you know, it can be used with just more than elections. You can use it with, like... It, the propositions some, that we have to well, vote on. Propos- I'm talking about, like, service. Like, use us instead of them because they uh, have, you know, bad reputation or whatever. Right. They, they're they unreliable service. They, right, exactly. You'll drop the call. You'll miss something important. Right, right. So, overall, though, fear just really sticks with you if it's done correctly. It can make a really memorable experience... And, uh, you know, like good or bad, I mean, how can fear be good? Well, if it's fake fear and you had a good time. Well, I mean, like, look at the other side of it, too. Like Dawn, the soap company. Okay. They've built this whole thing on the opposite of fear. Hope. Hope. Because you always see those little duckies. Stop horrible oil spill. Rebellions are built on hope. (laughs) <laughs> we really need to get the Star Wars podcast going. Right? Okay, we'll make that happen. All right. All right. All right. So this is the uh, – that's it for the show. <laughs> I feel so ooky. That's it for the show today. If you want to be featured on our show, we're all over social media. Go ahead and comment on our sound mail at humanfactorscast at gmail.com with all your questions. You can also get to the front of the line uh, by supporting us on our Patreon site at patreon.com slash humanfactorscast. Sure, to like, subscribe, and make it good, please. The Google Play Store, SoundCloud, or whatever your favorite podcast directory is. We're always trying to keep in touch with interesting topics that you guys, our listeners, want to hear on the show. So feel free to suggest a way 
I want to thank Mr. Billy Hall, my co-host. Yeah, hey. For being on the show today. Billy Hall, where can they find you? Uh, they can find me on Twitter or streaming on YouTube at uh, Comstar Cleric. As for me, I've been your Nick <laughs> I've been your Nick Rome host. Your Nick Rome. <laughs> wow. <laughs> All right. It's been a long day, guys. It's scary. <laughs> you can find me on LinkedIn or Twitter at Nick underscore Rome. Thanks again for listening to Human Factors Cast. Until next time. It, it depends. depends. <laughs> Spooky edition. <laughs> <laughs>